This is a Saucony Endorphin Pro version two. This year, it looks like this shoe is merely an upper update. So is it worth getting the new version? It's time to lace up the Endorphin Pro 2 and take it for a run. Six point three seven miles, seven minutes, thirty five seconds for one hundred sixty three beats per minute today. Going for a first run in the Endorphin Pro version two. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after the first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Saucony for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So, with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about. Saucony Endorphin Pro version two. This year, it is definitely just an upper update. It seems like the same midsole as last year. I'm trying to find the stack heights for you guys, but on the Saucony website, the Endorphin Pro version two is listed at a 35.5 millimeter stack height with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 27 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. It says for the Endorphin Pro version one though, 33 millimeter stack height shoe or a 33 and a half millimeter stack height shoe. I can't remember which one it was with that same eight millimeter drop that which would have given us 25 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. But it does feel like the same shoe to me. So if it wasn't for the fact that Saucony was putting out these numbers, I would feel like those numbers are suspect, not only because they're different, but also because they seem low. Running Warehouse is a site that I usually go to because they are one of the sources that most consistently puts out stack height information. And to the extent that I could go to the same place over and over again for stack height information, that's one of the places that I tend to go. They have both the Endorphin Pro version two and the version one, both at 39 millimeters of stack height in the heel. As far as the weights go, I think everyone's at either 7.5 or 7.6 ounces for the shoe, so it comes in relatively light. In terms of what goes into the shoe, uh, the midsole, we've got Power Run PB, which is the foam that I've been loving from Saucony. Uh, it kind of looks like Boost, but it behaves much better than Boost. It's just much more capable, especially when you put it into a racing application. And there is a carbon fiber plate, a full length carbon fiber plate in this one, and it's a pretty rigid carbon fiber plate as well. In terms of geometry, there is a rocker up front to aid with uh, that turnover in terms of your foot strike and your gait cycle. So even though it does have an eight millimeter drop, which is pretty aggressive, it also has a, a rocker just to help you kind of get through all of that stack height. And also I think probably to help you put you in a position where you can really load up that carbon and really get it bent. The upper is a mesh upper again this year. I think it's the same material. The ventilation is slightly different in terms of the patterns of the holes that are in the upper, but uh, it's a very breathable upper as well. The tongue is also like super floppy, just like a piece of thin mesh that's on top. Uh, I absolutely love how minimal it is. Uh, around back, there is just a little bit of structure in here, but it's pretty floppy. It kind of comes up into a point right where the Achilles is. And there's a little bit of padding back in here and not too much. Overall, not a lot of structure that's in the heel. And for me, for race shoes, that tends to work. I don't like it when there's a lot of just like armor in, in the back of the heel cup when it comes to shoes that are intended for racing. There are a couple of changes from version two to version one in terms of the upper. It seems like what they've done is they've offset the, the lacing a little bit, moving a little bit more kind of inward towards the medial side. Usually what we've seen from a lot of their shoes, if they are gonna mess around with kind of like, instead of having the laces right down the middle, sometimes they'll move them and skew them outwards towards the lateral side. But here it's kind of moved over just a little bit. 
And I also feel like it's a little bit narrower in terms of the opening that's in between the two sides of the upper. I think this is all intended to help give it a little bit better of a fit. And then there is also an extra kind of loop that comes down in the center of the lacing system here. And this loop connects all the way down towards the side of the foot. Again, I think to just help get a little bit more wrap when you're really cranking down on the laces to get a better fit. So those are the specs for the Endorphin Pro version two. Let's talk about what it's like to run in it. Pretty much everything that I've said from the Endorphin Pro first run and the comparison videos that I've made and even into the 100 mile review of the Endorphin Pro version one are all going to apply to this shoe as well because it feels to me like pretty much the exact same shoe. So for today's workout, I had a one mile warm up and then four miles of workout and those miles alternated between marathon effort, threshold effort, marathon effort to threshold effort. So a four mile block, but a couple, two different paces that were in there and then a one mile and change cool down. So at that warm up and cool down speed, the shoe feels a little bit firm. It feels a little bit uncomfortable. It feels like you're warming up in a race shoe. Um, doable, you can do it, but you wouldn't wanna do an entire like long run at that slower pace in this kind of shoe because it's just not built for that. It's not geared for that. So it's, you know, not the best, but quickly once you get into the work portion of your workout, that's when the shoe really starts to perk up and come alive. So the first mile of effort that I had, which was mile two for the workout today, was a marathon uh, effort mile. And for me, I'm running at about Boston qualifying pace for me, which is about 7.14, 7.10 minutes uh, per mile. Um, the mile ended up coming in a little bit hot, a little bit faster than that. Uh, but moving at that speed feels really nice. The shoe is very capable of running at marathon efforts. It likes being at marathon efforts, but in terms of the run experience in it, I feel like it still feels like it's a little bit firm of a foam when I'm running at marathon effort. So for like my weight, my height, uh, my skill level, my leg strength, all those kind of like things put together. I, I think I feel like I'm scraping the surface in terms of what the Endorphin Pro is capable of. So the experience that I get, it's kind of like pingy, almost like running on paddles in, in a way. So it's like there's definitely like springiness to it, but a firm springiness. I'm not sure if that makes sense, uh, but that's a sensation that I get. It's not like a foam where you're really squishing it down and like compressing and getting rebound from the foam. I feel like the bounce is in the foam and I'm getting it and it's all happening very quickly. And that's what's happening to me at uh, a marathon effort. I don't really feel like I'm compressing the carbon at all when I'm running at marathon pace. So I feel like I'm working and I feel like the shoe's working well with me, but I also get the sensation like, there's more to unlock here that I'm not unlocking yet. And so what I find a lot of times is when I'm trying to run marathon effort miles, either in the Endorphin Pro 2 or in the Endorphin Pro 1, I tend to either find myself like naturally slowing down a little bit or naturally speeding up. So like while it can handle marathon effort miles really easily and really well, like a racing shoe should be able to, um, it kind of drifts away from that pace. It, for me, it's not natural to stay right at my marathon pace. Um, and so what happened today was I ended up going a little bit faster than kind of the goal pace for today because I just felt like once you pick it up, it just feels more natural. The shoe starts to like, you're working with the shoe better. Everything's kind of like flowing a little bit better. Uh, and so the mile ended up being fast, which was fine because the next mile was a threshold effort mile. And what I said for the pro version one was that like this shoe loves threshold effort miles. And for me, I'm, it's the exact same thing here. It just felt really good. It was fun to run at that pace. It's certainly, you know, it's a workout um, and really hot and humid here in Chicago. But despite uh, some of the <laughs> disgusting uh, weather that was out there, uh, it was just really nice to kind of like, uh, like just kind of let it rip and, and run some threshold uh, miles there. So I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, there, like the foam starts to soften up a little bit because you're like hitting the ground harder. You're pushing off from the ground a little bit harder. You're moving faster. So there's just more force going into the shoe. And I feel like the foam then starts to kind of like warm up and loosen up a little bit. So you're starting to feel not just a pingy foam anymore. It's a foam that's a little bit softer. It's absorbing a little bit more impact, it feels like, but it's still got that really quick rebound. And then you're also, when you get moving faster, at least for me, it doesn't happen until I get closer to threshold pace. I'm really starting to like load that carbon. And then when you release and pick up your foot and push off, that 
carbon releases and it also gives back kind of some of that force from the compression. So it all works really well. It worked really well at Endorphin Pro version one and it's still working really well in the Endorphin Pro version two. So very happy to do that. For me, this shoe, I think if it's a great half marathon racing shoe. It's a really great 10K like on the roads uh, racing shoe, uh, or it's pretty much like the ultimate like marathon workout shoe. Because for me, when I'm doing a lot of marathon training, I'm spending some time at marathon pace, but I'm generally spending a lot more time in my workouts at threshold level. It might be part of a longer run, but a lot of threshold work. Uh, and so for me, having a shoe that's really good at running threshold pace and likes to be there, uh, and isn't that technical of a shoe that's very difficult to run at threshold pace is a really nice shoe to have into my rotation. So I thoroughly enjoyed the Endorphin Pro version one last year, and I'm thoroughly enjoying the Endorphin Pro two this year. I just probably won't be racing any marathons in it. Now let's talk about the upper. That's where some of the changes are for this year. And I think overall, I kind of went over what are like the the itemized list of what I think the changes are as far as the upper goes in the specs section of the video. Let's talk about how it felt. It felt largely the same. Now there's some changes that I've noticed here that I didn't even notice putting on the shoe. I didn't notice it until just now when I sat down kind of looking at the shoe a lot more closely that I feel like they've changed and moved. I mean, maybe I'm imagining it, but I feel like they moved over. Uh, where the laces go. So it's off center a little bit and a little bit more medial. I, I didn't feel a thing. And they added this extra loop that kind of comes underneath the upper and attaches down on the side of the shoe. Uh, I think again, to help with some lockdown. I, I didn't feel a difference. I didn't feel any more secure, any less secure. I felt pretty much like from here, like the arch of the foot forward, I felt like it was the exact same shoe. Uh, I know there are some differences in terms of where there's some overlays and reinforcements, but again, it just feels like the exact same shoe. The one thing that I am gonna keep an eye on is, I felt like this looked like the exact same heel uh, in terms of the setup as what we saw in the Pro version one, but I'm wondering if it's different because I felt like I, in the right foot, I wasn't get quite as snug as I remember the Endorphin Pro version one being. So I'm not ready yet. To, it's so close that I'm not ready to say that it's different or better or worse, but it's something that I'll be thinking about for the future. So ultimately they've made some changes to the upper. I'm not a huge fan of this checkerboard design. I've talked about that before. Saucony made an entire set using this checkerboard pattern. They sent me the entire set. Together the set looks like a set, but I, I'm not a, big fan of the design. I'm, tr I'm trying not to th think about it too much. I'm not talk about it too much because the shoe itself is really great. But with the non changes that are in the upper, it then begs the question, which one should you buy? The Endorphin Pro version two or the Endorphin Pro version one? I'd say if you can find it in your size, get the Endorphin Pro version one. It's the same shoe. Basically one of the best shoes of 2020 is now on sale because one of the best shoes of 2021 has now hit the market. So it's a win-win. So if you can't find one in a color that you want or in the size that you need, there's still a really great marathon workout shoe, half marathon racing shoe, 10K racing shoe. And for some people, a lot of people, a great marathon racing shoe that's available from Saucony. But if you're lucky, you might be able to get that same level of greatness at a discount. So it's a good time to be a runner. It's a fantastic shoe. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm gonna enjoy bringing it out for more workouts. It's very easy for me to decide to run in this shoe when I got a workout up on the calendar. So those are my thoughts on the Endorphin Pro version two after just this first run. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys down there. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to interact with you in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, what's going on?